government to open probe after Batik air pilots fell asleep mid-flight. And yuppies tomorrow, as is the start of the fasting month of Ramadan. Stay tuned for details. Selamat siang. Welcome to the latest news from Bali and Indonesia. This is March 10th, 2024, and my name is Bruce. And what is the weather like today? 29.8 degrees Celsius, humidity 76%, wind speed 27.4 kilometers per hour right now. Wow. And we had a huge storm up here yesterday, and it looked like around the island from what I could see on social media this morning, flooding just about everywhere, including here in Kampung Bugis, a couple of houses damaged. My wife's shop lost a part of her roof. I had to nail it down again today. And mm, some houses destroyed around Bulaleng. So bad, bad weather. Be careful if you are traveling. Be careful if you're at home. And it doesn't look that good for Ogo Ogos later today. We'll have to see what's going to happen. There was a parade here in Singaraja this morning to celebrate the beginning of Ramadan tomorrow. And wow, a lot of people out watching the streets. And it was packed. It was crowded. So tomorrow is Nippy. And well, there may or may not be internet. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's get started with the first story about the airline. Okay, so first story, P pilots fall asleep, both of them in the plane while it's flying. Batik air pilot and co-pilot fell asleep while flying KNKT. Plane had gone off track, yes. This story came out, was it yesterday? Uh, maybe the day before yesterday, but it has gone viral. And of course, the government had to respond to this, even though this has happened back in January. The Transportation Ministry said Saturday that it will open a probe, Saturday is today, uh, into local airline Batik Air after two of its pilots were found to have fallen asleep during a recent flight. The pilot and co-pilot were simultaneously asleep for approximately 28 minutes during a flight from southwest Sulawesi to the capital of Jakarta on January 25th, according to a report from the National Transportation Safety Committee, KNKT. There were 153 passengers on the Airbus A320 and four flight attendants. Everyone was unharmed during the two hour and 35 minute flight. The Transportation Ministry strongly reprimands Batik Air over the incident, according to Air Transport Director General M. Christie and M. Murney. And he called on airlines to pay more attention to the air crew's rest time. He said, we are going to carry out an investigation about this and find out what is happening. So this is all related to the National Transportation Safety Committee, the KNKT's preliminary report, which came out the other day. So all of this was on a round trip flight that went from Kandari in southwest Sulawesi to Jakarta. This incident caused the aircraft to leave its flight path and not respond to air control center. No one was injured and there was no damage to any parts of the aircraft, as stated in KNKT's report. However, KNKT still classified the incident as a serious one. In the chronology for this, let's take a look at this. So there were two pilots, the command pilot, 32 years old, and the co-pilot, second command, was 28 years old, and they were carrying passengers to start that went from Jakarta to Kandari on a round trip flight. In the middle of the flight from Jakarta to Kandari, the pilot offered the co-pilot to sleep because he looked tired. The co-pilot took a nap for 30 minutes and the pilot temporarily took over his duties. The plane landed, managed to land safely in Kandari in the KNKT investigation. It was written that during the transit time at the airport in Kandari, the pilot and co-pilot had time to eat some instant noodles in the cockpit. After dropping off all passengers, the plane continued its flight on the way back to Jakarta. When the aircraft reached a cruising altitude of 36,000 feet, the pilot and co-pilot removed their headsets and the cockpit speaker volume 
was increased. At that time, the pilot asked the co-pilot for permission to rest, and the co-pilot took over the pilot's duties temporarily. A few minutes later, the pilot fell asleep with the co-pilot doing his job. After some time, the pilot woke up and asked the co-pilot if he wanted to rest, but the co-pilot said, no, I'm fine. So they had a short conversation, and after that, the pilot went back to sleep. So after the co-pilot told the pilot he didn't need to sleep, and the pilot went back to sleep again, the co-pilot fell asleep accidentally. Apparently, from another story, he has twins, and he's been moving houses, and he was helping his wife take care of the twins, so he didn't get enough sleep, so he was really tired, and so he fell asleep. So you've got both of the guys, right, snoozing away <laughs> in the cockpit, and nobody flying. The, the flight is going automatic, but it has gone off course, and that's been recognized by the air traffic controllers. They try to contact the plane. Nobody responds. They try to contact other planes to get them to contact the plane. Doesn't happen. So the two were asleep for approximately 28 minutes. The pilot finally heard the calls coming in from Jakarta uh, or Sulawesi. I'm not sure which one it was and realized that his co-pilot was asleep and the plane was off course. The pilot immediately woke up the co-pilot and responded to calls, and the pilot of another aircraft that was trying to get a hold of him as well. The plane was then directed back to the correct flight path and successfully landed at Sukarno-Hatta Airport. As a result of this incident, the KNKT issued safety recommendations to anticipate the same thing if it happens in the future. Oh, I hope not. Batik Air Indonesia Operational Guidelines Volume A explains that pilots must have a personal checklist, which includes categories of disorders that pilots may experience, including illness, medication, stress, alcohol, fatigue, and emotions called I'm Safe. The acronym I'm Safe was created so it could be easily be remembered before performing flight duties. The investigation concluded that it did not reveal detailed guidance or procedures from the I'm Safe personal checklist. Batik Air said its airline is committed to providing comfort to passengers. Batik Air, with its strong commitment to passenger safety and comfort, has delivered various steps to develop operational standards and pilot performance. Being a top priority, safety is a non-negotiable core value as long as the pilots are awake, shows the company's dedication to continued strengthening aviation services. Both pilots were temporarily suspended. The suspensions were a form of showing the company's seriousness towards the importance of safety aspects and in order to carry out an investigation that was comprehensive. Okay, I have flown Batik Air twice. And I have to say, I've never had a problem with it. Okay, so with Nyepi coming tomorrow, right, there's been a lot of talk about what you can do and what you can't do. And some people always complain. And, well, there are problems every year with people, both locals and foreigners, who don't obey the rules. Well, here is a story on that. Deportation sanctions for foreign tourists who violate Nyepi will be coordinated by the Bali Tourism Department. The Bali Tourism Office has asked tourism stakeholders to convey to tourists who will be on Nyepi holiday in Bali to follow the rules. This aims to prevent Nyepi violations committed by foreign tourists from occurring again like last year. We ask stakeholders to convey to tourists who are in charge of all things, including accommodation to inform tourists that we are observing the holy day of Nyepi with provisions that are already known to everyone, such as not being allowed to travel and so on, according to Pak Pumayun from Bali Provincial Tourism Office. Pak Pumayun also appealed to tourists to follow the Nyepi rules. Socialization has been conveyed to tourists through tourism stakeholders. He hoped that this socialization will be really conveyed so that there will be no more violations of the Nepi holiday. When asked about the issue of deportation for foreign tourists who violate Nepi regulations, Pak Pumayan said the deportation sanctions would be coordinated with immigration. 
He said, I will follow the mechanism later if a new report is submitted to immigration as to what the confirmation will be. If it's in accordance with the regulations, we'll just follow the existing regulations with immigration. According to Pak Pamayan, foreign tourists who violate the Nyepi ban, he said, if you look at last year's report, there were those who didn't know the Nyepi rules, and there were those who knew them, but really wanted to know what conditions Nyepi were like in Bali. So they went outside to see what the streets were like, and of course, do some filming for social media, because wow, that's a big one. You can get a lot of likes, a lot of views with that. So possible deportation if you're caught not following the rules. And well, I've talked about the Nyepi packages that some hotels have and how at least the government over in Karanasam, in Kulungkung, Karanasam or Kulungkung, said no, no Nyepi packages in the hotels here. We don't want that. We want people to follow the rules. What are the rules? Well, let's get to that in a minute. Nyepi and fasting simultaneously. This is a cooling appeal from the Bulang traditional village. The holy day of Nyepi, which falls tomorrow, also coincides this year with the first day of fast fasting for Muslims, and that is Ramadan, 1445. The Kleon of Buling traditional village appealed to religious communities to respect each other's religious holidays, which fall at the same time this year. There are three kampungs here in Singaraja, which are predominantly Muslim, and one of them being here, Kampung Bugis and Kampung Kajanan, just over there, and Kampung Anya, I think is mostly Muslim as well. So coordination has been going on with Pechelang and 14 traditional banjars in the Buling traditional village about the two holidays coinciding. Muslims are expected to carry out obligatory prayers and tarawih at their nearest house of worship or at their own homes. Mosques are not to use the loudspeakers and to use limited lighting during prayer. Muslim leaders have been asked to inform the congregations to look for the nearest mosque to pray at and don't wander around from place to place looking for a mosque or pray at home if you can. So the Klian said, we're sure of tolerance and respect as a form of our togetherness in Bululing. The Klian said the roads will be closed from 6 a.m. tomorrow morning until 6 a.m. Tuesday morning and no one should be out in the roads unless it's an emergency. And so what is Nyepi going to look like if you haven't gone through Nyepi before? Television and internet are turned off. Telephone and SMS are still served. And these are the Tarawi rules for Muslims. Every Nyepi day, just like in previous years, telecommunication operators that provide cellular data services and IPTV, Internet Protocol Television, will be turned off during this year's 1946 Saka Nyepi day. And this was conveyed by the head of the Bali Province Communication Informatics and Statistics Services, Pakade Pramana. Cellular service providers will turn off cellular data. IPTV and all television service providers, including radio, will not broadcast or distribute broadcast from March 11th at 6 a.m. until Tuesday, March 12th at 6 a.m. Pak Pramana said that this decision was strengthened by the circular letter of the Minister of Communication and Information of the Republic of Indonesia, number 2, 2024, concerning the appeal to implement a joint call regarding the implementation of Nyepi. He said this is a policy that is carried out every year by the Bali provincial government to support the implementation of Nyepi Day so that it can run in a conducive, safe, and comfortable manner. Meanwhile, services for vital objects such as hospital services, police stations, military, BMKG, BPBD, Basar Nas, airports, fire brigades, and other public interest services, which much by their nature continue and they will remain operational. Meanwhile, telephone, SMS, and fiber optic services can still be used during Yepi holiday to make it easier for the public if they need services, especially emergency ones. This is done to avoid and or ward off hoaxes and negative content. Now, because Nyepi coincides with the first night of Ramadan, the joint circular that was put out also regulates the procedures for performing Tarawi worship for Muslims. In this circular, Muslims are allowed to do their Tarawi prayers in places of worship 
but they have to come on foot and they cannot use loudspeakers. So there's going to be no television tomorrow, no radio tomorrow, maybe no internet. You're not supposed to leave your house. You're not supposed to make loud noises. If you use electricity at night, you're supposed to blacken your windows. And what else? This is a day for contemplation, meditation, and, well, no sex, no having fun. Uh, I guess that would include no drinking. And for us as foreigners, we just need to go along and support this major cultural and religious event in Bali. Okay, you remember, I think it was, was it last week or two weeks ago, I was talking about Park San Diego Uno, wanted to do Swift Dynamics here in Indonesia because of the big Taylor Swift concert in Singapore and how many people was going on to there, going on to there, going to, to there. And well, Pak Luhut is also involved in this now. Indonesia to host big concerts to lure tourists, Luhut says. Not to be outdone by Singapore's hosting of global pop music sensation Taylor Swift, which boosted hotel bookings and other revenues in the city-state. Coordinating Maritime Affairs and Investment Minister Pak Luhut announced that Indonesia will also organize large concerts to boost tourism. He said last week, Pak Odo told me that no one could go to Singapore as all of the hotels were fully booked for nine days because of Taylor Swift's concerts. Why? Because in Indonesia, there's no such show. Singapore has hosted numerous mega scale events since the end of the pandemic, including Formula One Grand Prix, which is currently in its fourth term with the contract set to end in 2028. Additionally, British band Coldplay recently sold out tickets for six nights in Singapore. And Taylor Swift, the 13-time Grammy winner, made, her, made Singapore her only stop in Southeast Asia. A little controversy about that. We'll talk about that in a second. Pak Luhut said he'd had meetings with relevant stakeholders and indicated that Indonesia would host mega concerts in the next six months. The senior minister said he would embrace various individuals who were familiar with the entertainment world, especially those who could bring international artists to the country. Pak Luhut stressed that Indonesia needs to be able to compete with Singapore, especially in tourism. What Singapore has done, we can also do, he said. We need to be able to compete. If Singapore can make lots of profits, why can't we? Are we lacking intelligence? We are a great people, he said. And Pak Sandiaga responded to this. Earlier, Mr. Luhut said that we would learn from Singapore. If necessary, we would do a comparative study. We always do comparative studies here. And I will do it tomorrow. A comparative study to Singapore. I will go to Singapore. Ah, nice trip. To meet with the Singapore government. And we will see the potential for collaboration in the future explained the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy. Because whatever somebody does and is successful, we always follow up on that. Taylor Swift's sole concert in Southeast Asia, being Singapore, has ruffled some feathers in other countries in the region. Thai Prime Minister claimed that a grant paid to her by Singapore was made on condition that the only country she would be singing in in Southeast Asia was Singapore. A Filipino lawmaker said it was not what good neighbors do. Singapore Prime Minister, however, said on Tuesday that the city-state's deal with SWIFT was not hostile to neighboring countries. He said, our agencies negotiated an arrangement with her to come to Singapore and perform and to make Singapore her only stop in Southeast Asia. And apparently she was singing in Melbourne as well, not considered Southeast Asia. Swift has been known for bringing significant economic benefits to the city she visits, a phenomenon also referred to as Swiftonomics. According to several news outlets, Swift's stop in Singapore led to a 30% increase in demand for accommodation. Channel News Asia cited an expert that said the 33-year-old singer's Singapore leg may generate economic value comparable to or greater than an estimated 1.2 billion Australian dollars generated for the economy based on her performance in Melbourne. Wow, 
a lot of money. Okay, and so <laughs> apparently a lot of Indonesians who have a little bit of money flew to Singapore to see Taylor Swift. I don't know what they call her fan Swifties or something. Um, but this has got the Indonesian government looking at dollars, rupees floating around in their eyes. Let's get some big bands here and play. And in a separate story about this, Pak Santiago was talking about bringing somebody to Bali, a big band to Bali, and so we could get up to 100,000 people to watch. Where are we going to put 100,000 people? I'm not sure. Anybody know of a venue where you can stick 100,000 people at one time? Okay, so if you are a pop music fan, you may be in for some good times in the next six months. So that's about it for today. I want to get this up before I close things down to get ready for my behavior during Nepi, which is going to be just kicking back. And I hope if you are here, you have a good Nepi. If you are not here, well, I hope you're having a lot better weather than we are here in Bali right now because, wow, it sucks. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe. And I will see you next time.